Hello, this is Grant Loves Books. Today I'm talking about a book that has a lot of deep resonance for me because of the subject and because of where I was living when I first read it. I mentioned before that I left Canada in the year 2000 and eventually found my way to be living in Budapest, Hungary. I was working as an ESL teacher and Honestly, I was really not very good in the beginning. The ESL classes I had take to prepare myself to go to Europe were mainly geared towards children. And the reason for that was that they assumed or they had built their program on the assumption that teachers would be going to Korea or to Japan because that's where the money was. A lot of people wanted their children to have English lessons or, or you would be working in a grammar school. So. The ESL class that I took was not very useful for me. So when I, when I got to Budapest and I was teaching people, they sent me to companies and I was teaching business people because that was who needed it. These people needed to learn English to be better functioning at their jobs. So one of the things, like I would always start off my classes, you know, please tell me about Hungary, tell me about your country, tell me about, just tell me everything about your country. And they did. You know, Hungarian people invented a lot of things. The ballpoint pen, the Rubik's cube, the hydrogen bomb. Hungarians are very good at the Olympics. Even though it is a small country with a population of 10 million, they are very good at fencing, kayak, and water polo. Hungarian water polo team is, they usually do extremely well. Hungarians are very proud of their artists, especially their writers, their poets. So in 2002, when a Hungarian writer won the Nobel Prize for Literature, it came as something as a surprise to me and I believe everyone in the country. We all asked, who is Imre Kertes? Like, how is it possible that, a, that a, a writer can win the most prestigious prize for literature and no one has ever heard of him? Well, it is, um, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, especially not Hungarian because I lived there for such a long time and I have a great affinity for Hungarian people. From what I have gathered, Imre Kertes had a very difficult time getting published or making any money working as a writer in his home country. So he moved to Germany where he was published and he received a great deal of recognition and was able to live the life of a writer. There are some who say that he turned his back on his home country. I don't know if it's proper to call it irony, but the fact that a Hungarian Jew who was sent to Auschwitz as a young teenager at the age of 14 survived, of course, and then later on in his life wrote about this experience in a semi-autobiographical form has to go to Berlin to get recognition rather than get it in his own home country. I, I think there is a degree of irony in that. It's about a teenage boy who was sent to Auschwitz and survives. The first time I read the book, I have to admit that I was just too anxious to get to the concentration camp chapters. That if you're writing about the Holocaust, let's go to the Holocaust. How do I feel about it? The second time I read the novel, the, those initial chapters are, they set the stage for, for everything. Absolutely critical to the understanding and the, the poignancy of the novel that the initial chapters, like right away from the beginning, we have a moody, selfish and self-interested young teenager, 14, 15, who's annoyed that he has to spend so much time with his family, with family obligations, because his father is being sent to a work camp in Germany and they have to have all of these going away parties, you know, very sad and morose events. And this kid doesn't want to be a part of that because he's a teenager. He just, he, does, he, he has the hardest time finding the, sim the sympathy for his father and his family because he's a kid. He has to follow his father around where his father is signing away the business to one of his employees hoping, like with fingers crossed, that he can trust this employee so that if he ever returns from the camp, this employee will return the business to him. Here is the, the genius of the novel, that it's 
The way that Imre Kertes has written this novel, a teenager goes to Auschwitz. You know, there is a scene where these prisoners at this concentration camp are coming on to the train and unloading the passengers. And they're, they're whispering to them, they're saying, you know, tell, tell the guards that you're 16 and tell them you're strong and tell them that you're ready to work. And, and for Christ's sake, don't tell them that you're twins. Do like no twins. And they whisper them this um, very important knowledge so that when these boys get off the train and they meet this, um, I don't know, assessment point where you either go over here to become a worker or you go over here to be exterminated, they can give the right answers. I'm 16 and I'm strong and I'm ready to work. And they are spared. Spared temporarily. Throughout the novel, he is a teenager. It's not only an autobiographical book about this is the horror that I went through. It is also like the literary achievement of it, that it is this horrifying event of the 20th century from the perspective of this boy. And that is why Faithlessness is a truly tremendous book that I recommend wholeheartedly. It is a bit hard for me to recommend that one to you. I, I hope that you will read it. I hope that if you have a little bit of interest in what was taking place in Europe in the 1940s, excellent perspective of what it was like from this one human being who wrote about it. You're like, what is the perfect season to read Faithlessness? I would say the autumn, not exactly the winter. The winter, I think it might be a bit, you know, the weather might make your soul a little bit too saddened. But the autumn, the windy autumn with the nice colored trees where you can still feel happy with life, but reflective. Uh, autumn. Autumn is the time for reflection. So that's all. Just a short review about Faithlessness. Thank you for listening today. Please find this book and read it. It is, it is such a valuable piece of literature. The perspective, the writing, and just, just the knowledge that it contains about our very recent human history. If you want to see more book reviews about books that you may not have heard of or that may have escaped your attention, please like and subscribe. Uh, there is a link below if you want to buy the book on Amazon and if you spend any money following my link I will get a little cut. All of this is very hard to say after speaking about the Holocaust and as well there is a link below which will take you to my Patreon account if you want to support my channel and support my making more videos in the future. Thank you for listening. My name is Grant. This is Grant Loves Books. Please stay tuned. Thanks for listening.